Another of these useless layaway layabouts? Welcome back, gang. It's Delta from DeltiasGaming.com. And today I'm going to cover a little bit of details on companions coming to the Elder Scrolls Online. I've unlocked and played around with both of them, currently in testing on the public test server, and I want to give you a brief overview on all the aspects of companions. We're going to go over how to unlock them, interactions, customization, combat skills, gear, yeah, pretty much everything, so get ready. Timestamps are below if you wish to skip ahead, as well as other important links in the description. Also, if you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow so I can continue to create content for you. Let's talk companions. How, where do you find these two? Currently at launch of the companion system, there are two, Miri and Bastion. Miri is my favorite in case you were wondering, she's amazing. Anyway, you'll need to port into Blackwood Zone, southeastern part of your world map, just below Shadowfen. Here you'll find the main town and the zone, Leowin. Once inside of Leowin, you'll need to exit the main city, and you'll have two directions you'll need to head. North, you'll be looking for Doom Vault, where Miri can be found. South, you'll be looking for Deep Scorn Hollows, where Bastion can be found. Once you head toward your desired companion, you will need to complete an introductory quest which gives you some details about the companion and is pretty standard fare. I completed each of the quests in about 20 minutes without skipping a lot of dialogue, however I did not explore the area, so it might range in time for you. Once completed, you will then be able to summon your companion via the user interface which has been changed to allies. Here you'll find sections with your companions and familiar faces like your banker and merchant and so on. Keep in mind you can unlock both companions, but you can only summon one at a time. And important here, they are account bound. Woot! So you can access them on all characters. Just please note as of recording this video, you'll have to do the initial quest on each character, though that could change in the future. Another thing to keep in mind is companions can go almost anywhere with you. This includes veteran dungeons and trials. However, they cannot go in solo arenas like Maelstrom or Vatashran, and they cannot go in PvP. On the test server, I took my companion uh, both to veteran hard mode dungeon and trial at max level of 20. Both events were not successful, so don't expect them to fill, fulfill the role of an actual player as of right now. Speaking of players, they will count toward the player limit in instance-based content. So if you're in a trial like Hellraw, you'll have a max player cap of 12 party members. So this could be six players and six companions or however you mix it up. Once a real player shows up, someone's companion will automatically be dismissed. Companions will also be suppressed when you swim or even when you're riding your horse. Sometimes they lag behind, but it seems to be getting better. Now that you got your companion, what's next? Well, that's the interactions, of course, and you'll want to click the interact button with your companion, speaking to them and opening up some options here. There will be a couple of options when speaking to your companion. Think of them as twofold. One, story functionality, and one, combat customization. The companion's menu will give you important information and overview status, which includes skills, rapport, experience points, and their appearance. Speaking of appearance, you can customize their appearance from this menu as well using your collections menu and obtaining collectibles including mounts, so fire up those rare mount people, I know you love them. Equipment changes can be done here as well, which I'm going to break down further, so look in the timestamps if you want to jump ahead to that section. But if you find new gear and equip it, the appearance of your companion will not change, so don't expect fully heavy armor wood elf to appear on your character. And consider this the main method for changing almost anything about your companion. Interact with them first. Use this menu. Now getting into the meat of companions, and that's the skills. First thing you're going to want to do, um, besides playing dress up, is set up the skills. When you initially unlock companions, look at this menu. It appears you'll have five ability slots, just like you hold it on one bar in the ultimate. Keep in mind you will not unlock all these slots, as you need to level up your companion from 1 to 20, which is currently the max level, in order to equip all the slots, including an ultimate at level 20. These companion skills and skills menus have some flexibility, but think of them and their options and skills as a much more dumbed down version than a real player's menu, rather than having everything at your disposal. You will also not need skill points, thank the maker, nor will you need to earn experience in order to morph or rank up companion skills. 
The resource companions use for skills is essentially time. They have a cooldown system. So the cooldown system can range from 8 seconds to 20 or 30 and so forth. So the more impactful, the longer the cooldown of that ability will be. So they will cast abilities 1 through 5 left to right and an ultimate according to their cooldown timer. So when you launch into combat, expect a flurry of abilities at the start, then a bunch of meaningless sword swings or light attacks with bow for a while. Speaking of launching into combat, you're going to use the pet key, the pet keybind, in order to send your companion off first. This is very useful if you're playing a tankish style with your companion, so they pull aggro and taunt if that's your number one ability. Each companion comes equipped with a weapon and gear sets and can be changed into tank, healer, damage dealer, hybrid based on their gear and skill set. Early on, seems Miri defaults to a ranged bow user that plays like a stamina nightblade. Bastion plays, feels, and looks more like a magic dragonite tank, though I've tested both of them in different roles and they can each work decent. Another thing to note is just like a player, you need to have a corresponding weapon in order to use a skill. Meaning, you can't have Mary equip a bow and want her to use a two-hander skill. It just won't work. All right, so now that we've covered skill, the most important thing, and that's appearance, playing dress up with your companions, because look good, play good. Companions' visual appearance can be changed using the cosmetics you've collected um, in your collection system. So you'll have a limited amount of appearance options, though I'm speculating here. I imagine uh, Zoss will continue to add to this system now that we have companions because I want a lot more outfits to use. You can alter the color of the companion's outfit via the die station just like you would a player. Just note the UI has been altered. So there is a, in the top right, there's an icon that will allow you to switch from player to companions. Again, this customization does include mounts, which I know some of you absolutely love. So speaking of gear, let's talk about that. Think of this gear system and everything I've covered so far as a much simpler version than a real player's. For starters, you'll find companion gear in much less frequency, just like player gear, killing mobs, collecting stuff, etc., etc. Companions will not have separate storage space, so it won't be another inventory system we'll have to babysit, thank the maker. These items come in very limited traits and qualities, with the max quality being purple. You can sell these items on traders, so I imagine there will be a market for companion gear and very valuable to farm, at least initially, and you will not be able to craft item sets for companions. So don't expect to hit the crafting station and have a fully decked out gold set of gear for companions. It won't work. Here's a pro tip for you. Once you unlock companion, immediately head to Blackwood Leyland and go to the weaponsmith, woodworker, etc. Because these vendors will sell you white gear that you can equip immediately. This is very useful because I picked up Miri and she defaults to a bow user kind of nightblade, but I wanted her to tank because I can do plenty of damage. So I immediately got her a full set of heavy armor, sword and shield in less than 30 minutes. I had my companion unlocked, geared up, and ready to adventure and start leveling. So in case you're interested, here's the traits and what they do. Quicken gives you cooldown reduction. Prolific gives you ultimate generation. Focus gives you critical strike chance. Shattering gives you penetration. Aggressive gives you damage done. Soothing gives you healing done. Augmented ability buffs and de uh, debuff duration. Bolster gives you reduced damage taken. Vigorous gives you max health. So these are pretty ob obvious, pretty limited. And I think it just makes it much easier to manage gear for companions than you as a player. I spent half my time relogging to find where gear's at. Next up, we're gonna cover progression. And the easiest way for me to explain companion progression is to think of it as two separate pro progression mechanisms. One progression is for story questing elements called rapport. And the other is for skills and overall combat power. And that's experience, which is very familiar. Experience points is based on the typical character XP while your companion is active. And it's a count wide. Your companion starts out at level one and goes to level 20, which is the cap currently. XP boosters such as holiday bonuses and consumables will provide a benefit to companion XP. 
it seems like companion XP was about one seventh or one tenth or so of your experience. And you can see it in the user interface in the bottom right. It'll pop up just like when you earn experience, it'll kind of stack on top of each other. I took my companion to Skyreach and grinded here for a little bit, uh, pretty much as they lay dead the entire time. But it seemed you could easily go from one to 20 in an afternoon or an evening if you do this grinding type method with boosters and had a really good build set up for grinding. As companions gain level, they get increased health, overall weapon and spell damage, ability slots, and more abilities, with 20 giving you an ultimate selection. Companion experience progression is much more easy to manage, as you don't have to select attribute points or anything like that. The game does all that for you. You also don't have to collect sky shards or to get skill points, so thank the maker. If you want to understand how to level up companion skill lines, hover over the bar and it'll explain things for you that aren't that intuitive, like Undaunted or Fighter's Guild. This can be very useful as you'll have to do quests in order to progress some of these different uh, skill lines. The next system to discuss about progression, and that's the story elements with the rapport system. It goes up and down based on the actions you take while your companion is active. An easy way to find out some of the ways to increase rapport is in through your journal. So if you want spoilers, don't check this out, but this, this will essentially kind of show you some of the achievements to give you a nice boost. Think of the rapport system as similar to a lot of other games that have companions for my testing. Steal from people or kill innocents and a good companion will have a negative reaction. You can check this via the companion UI by interacting with the companion. So as you rank up, they will unlock more dialogue and quest options, which is totally cool. Keep in mind, if your rapport goes too low, the companion could actually leave you, but it's only for a certain amount of time. Since this is a count bound, they will come back. Perks and incentives. Okay, Deltia, this all sounds juicy, wonderful, but what's the point to companions beyond the story? I'm glad you asked. Companions provide some cool perks and incentives beyond the story. Once you unlock companions, you'll continue to increase the rapport and gain access to side quests. Once you've completed the second companion quest, you will unlock a house guest collectible companion, allowing them to be placed and utilized similar to house guest collectibles. I know you housing folks love this. Also, each companion, this, this is pretty cool, that each companion has a unique associated non-combat perk, which benefits you while active. Miri is treasure chests found through treasure maps and overland have a 30% chance to provide additional loot from hidden compartments. So these treasures might have more gold, uh, sellables, or recipes. So something that you might want to have if you're farming overland sets like Mother Sorrows, which are really popular right now, you could level this up and get access to this because it could make you a lot more gold. Bastion is potions looted from chests and monsters have a 30% chance to be improved by Bastion's insight. So I don't know what that means if they come with like spell power potions or weapon damage, but that again, really cool if you're trying to farm some stuff and save yourself some money. And something from the patch notes that I read, I don't fully understand, but I'm just gonna read it verbatim for you here. Quote, by completing meta achievements associated with each companion, you can unlock a keepsake collectible from each companion, which provides the benefit of the non-combat perk even while the companion isn't active. I don't know what meta achievements are, but I'll learn more about that and update y'all as I find out. And so that was a lot of information. This is a big but brief overview of companion, which is quite complex system. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you wish for me to cover more information on companions or anything else on the public test server, like breaking down each companion, specifically their, their skills, build setup ideas and more, please leave me a comment with suggestions. Also, if you enjoyed this video and stuck around at the end, please like and subscribe as it does help my channel grow and I'll be doing more Elder Scrolls Online content in the future. Thanks for watching.